I'm Mark Hanley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. A well-designed saltwater tank is actually easy to maintain. It doesn't have to take up a lot of your time other than you sitting back, staring, and enjoying your tank. And a lot of the times, the less you fiddle with the tank, the better that your tank is. Now there's some tasks that you have to do around your tank, and a lot of these can, in my opinion, must be automated. The things that are on my must automate list are there because they make your tank stable. They actually can make it safer, they give you more free time, and they actually make your tank more successful. Now those things on my must automate list are auto top off, also known as ATO for short, temperature control, lighting control. Lighting control is straightforward, so let's talk about that first. There's a high probability that the lighting type you have on your saltwater tank already has some kind of automation built in, likely in terms of form of a timer. This is gonna turn the lights on and turn them off at a certain time. Now you may be laughing saying, really? On and off? Yeah, you'd be surprised how many questions we get about people who say, I've got a light on my saltwater tank. Do I need to turn it off? The answer is yes. That light needs to be turned on and it needs to be turned off. Now, if your lighting has built-in control for on and off, that's great. If it doesn't, at the very minimum, get yourself a light timer. For example, this Coralife light timer, it has a timer built in for many outlets that you can put different types of lighting on your tank. So if you have more than one lighting fixture, this control strip here will turn things on and off. Now, if you have more complex lighting like LED lighting, the on and off timer is certainly something that you want to have turned on on that lighting control and make sure that you're ramping that light up and ramping it down. This is one of the big benefits of LEDs is that you can ramp up the intensity and ramp down the intensity. When you do that, lots of fun stuff starts happening in your tank. The fixture will actually wake up and come out and they'll actually bed down at night. On my old 450 gallon tank, I could watch certain fish go to sleep at different times depending on how that light was ramping down. Corals will inflate during the day, sea anemones will inflate and then deflate at night. It's a very fun thing to watch. That's what I'm doing with the Kessel AP9X, the light that I'm using on the Mega Matrix 120. The lights will slowly ramp up in the morning, stay constant throughout the day, then ramp down at night. The ramping up and down makes for a much more enjoyable viewing experience than just all on or all off. So at the bare minimum, get your lights on a timer to turn them on and turn them off, whether that be a mechanical timer like this or software in your lighting control. And if you have the ability to ramp up and ramp down your lighting, by all means, do that. Whatever you do, don't leave your lights on 24 seven. The purpose of an auto top off kit is to keep the water level constant in your tank or sump. A constant water level means your skimmer is going to run better. A constant water level also means your tank salinity will stay stable, which keeps your fish happy and your corals really happy. Now, I'm not gonna deny that you can top off your tank by hand, and that requires you remembering to do it, and it requires you being on hand to do it. In other words, if you only want to top off manually, I hope you don't go on vacation for more than a couple days. The Duetto Dual Sensor ATO is an easy to use, self-contained entry level unit that has two sensors for redundancy. The Tunzi Osmolator is a big step up in quality and it also has two sensors. I used the Osmolator for a long time and I still recommend it if you don't have or don't want a tank controller. If you know a tank controller is in your future, then I recommend you get an auto top off system that integrates with your tank controller. On the Mega Matrix 120, we're gonna use the Neptune Systems Apex on this tank. Therefore, we're gonna use the Neptune Systems ATK auto top off kit. This integrates directly with the Apex and lets us do some really nice things like making sure this is actually topping off. So we know we're gonna put a controller on here, therefore we're gonna go with the ATK. Yes, I love tank controllers. I've already spilled the beans that we're gonna put one on this tank. I use them on all my builds, so if you can get an ATK that works with the controller that you have or you know you're going to get, by all means do it. Please, 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 if you automate nothing else on your tank, put some redundancy on your heater or your chiller, or ideally both if you're running both of them. I can't tell you how many tanks I've heard of melting down or literally freezing to death because the heater or the chiller got stuck on. Don't rely on that built-in thermostat on the heater or the chiller put some redundancy on there. It doesn't cost you a lot of money. It'll be absolutely worth it in the long run. If it avoids one tank disaster, it's completely worth it. Here's a simple way to put redundancy on your heater or chiller. Grab yourself a temperature controller. The basic Inkbird model includes a temperature probe and will control two devices. That means you can control your heater and you can control your chiller, two chillers or two heaters. Plug your heater and or your chiller into the Inkbird controller Add the probe to your sump or tank, 
set the temperature, and you're done. For an easy added layer of redundancy, get a heater with a built-in thermostat. Set the temperature for two degrees above the external heater controller. This way, power to the heater is cut on and off by the external controller, saving the small contact inside the heater from turning the heater on or off. That makes your heater last longer. If for some reason the external controller fails and it fails on, then the built-in thermostat in the heater will take over. For those of you wanting more visibility into your heater or chiller control, the Yinkbird with Wi-Fi has two temperature probes for redundancy, and when you connect it to your Wi-Fi, it will send alerts when the temperature is too high, too low, or the heater or chiller has been on too long. Plus, you can monitor your tank's temp when you're away from your tank. That's a lot of peace of mind for just 60 bucks. Tank automation can be as high-tech or as low-tech as you want it. And whenever I automate something, I know I'm adding some complexity to my system, but it's worth it to me for what I'm automating. And when I automate things, I want to have some levels of redundancy. If one piece of it fails, then I want to know things like pumps aren't going to run forever. Now you can make it as high tech or as low tech as you want. The point is, your heater control, your chiller control, your auto top off, and your lighting control, they're on my must automate list. Please automate these things as a bare minimum. And from there, the sky's the limit. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.